Hi, it's Mr. Wasman, and today we are going to look at how to use units of capacity uh, to measure liquid. Uh, we're going to be looking at customary units of capacity used in the United States. We're in our math journal on pages 228 and 229, so let's just jump right in. On the top right corner of page 228, you're going to see this graphic. And this graphic helps us remember the different units uh, that are embedded within different amounts of liquid. So it looks like letters inside of letters. So this first letter is the letter G, G for gallon. And inside that letter G, we see four letter Qs. Q stands for quart. So if there are four Qs embedded inside this G, then we can infer that they mean that there must be four quarts for every gallon. Now we can do the same thing with the letter P. P stands for pints. And there are two letter P's in our Q. So there are two pints for every quart. And inside each of the letter P's, there are two letter C's, or s cups. There are two cups for every pint. So there are two cups for every pint, two pints for every quart, four quarts for every gallon. Now, the one thing that I did not demonstrate is how many quarts are in a half gallon. Well, when you uh, split something in half, you're basically dividing it by two. So that just means we're going to divide 4 by 2, which would also give us 2. So if you can skip count by 2s and 4s, then you can convert between cups, pints, quarts, and gallons. Now let's take a look at these tables down here. These are basically function machines, or input-output. So all you'd have to do to complete the tables is figure out the conversion uh, by looking at the numbers up top, and then multiplying the numbers in the left column to... Uh, get your answer for the right. So for example, there are two cups in every pint, so that must mean that there are two cups in one pint and four cups in two pints, because two times two equals four. So all you have to do is multiply the number in the left-hand column by the conversion unit. Now, down at the bottom, you'll see that... Um, we don't have a number on the left, but we have the answer on the right. So we're going to use division, because division is the reverse of multiplication. So I have to ask myself, how many groups of 2 can I get out of 16? Or what times 2 gives me 16? Well, if I reverse it, 16 divided by 2, that's going to give me an answer of 8. So 8 must be my missing number. I would do the same thing in these other three tables. I would just multiply the number on the left by the conversion. Okay, so there are two pints for every quart, so I would multiply every number on this side by two. There are four quarts for every gallon, so I would multiply every number on this side by four. And then quarts and cups. Well, that actually leads us to the problem on the top of page 229. So we're going to come back to that one here in a second. At the top of page 229, we see some number lines, just another way to represent the information that we need for converting units. And as you can see, there are two cups for every pint and two pints for every quart. Now they ask us, how many cups are there in a quart of milk? Well, I would have to multiply the number of cups in a pint times the number of pints in a quart. In other words, 2 times 2. And we all know that 2 times 2 is going to give us 4, so there must be 4 cups in every quart. Now, if there are 4 quarts in a gallon, and there are 4 cups in every quart, I would then multiply the number of cups per quart by the number of quarts per gallon, and that would give us the number of cups per gallon. 4 times 4, you got it, 16. Okay, so if you can skip count by 2s and 4s, you can convert between uh, customary units of capacity. Now, the problems 5 through 8 are all uh, story problems that require you to do just that. Let's take a look at one right now. 
Let's take a look at number seven. Daphne and Jordan made jam to saw the market. Their jam sold in pint-sized jars. They made 137 quarts, but only sold 59 quarts. How many pint-sized jars are left? Well, first of all, this is a two-step problem. We need to find out how many quarts they had left, and then we need to convert uh, the quarts into pints. So let's start with the fact that we know there are 137 quarts, and they only sold 59. So I'm going to subtract 137 minus 59. Now, I know that I can't subtract 9 from 7, so i got to borrow. So I look to the tens column to break up a 10 and make it into 10 ones. But there aren't enough tens there either. So I have to go all the way over here to the hundreds. And I'm going to break up my 1 100 into 10 tens and combine it with the other tens here, making them 13 tens. But now I have to break up my 13 tens and make them into 12 tens because I got to borrow one of those tens and make them into 10 ones and give them to the ten to give them to the ones column, making 17 ones. So 137 is then transformed into 12 tens and 17 ones. Now I know that works out to be 137, so I can continue my problem. So now I'm going to subtract 17 minus 9. That leaves me with 8. 12 minus 5, that leaves me with 7. So the first part of my problem is there were 78 quarts left. Now I need to know how many pint-sized jars. So I go back to my table up top, and as you can see, there are two pints for every quart. So all I have to do is take my number 78, which is quarts, and then I'm going to multiply it by 2 because there are 2 pints for every quart. Now 78 times 2, let's use uh, partial products to solve that. I'm going to take 70 and multiply it by 2, and then I'm going to take 8 and multiply it by 2. Well, 7 times 2 is 14, so 7 tens times 2 is going to give me 14 tens, otherwise known as 140. And 8 times 2, of course, is 16. So I'm going to add those two together. And that gives me 156, and that's 156 pints. So my answer, uh, took me a little while to get there, is that there are 156 jars of jam left over from that sale. If you have any questions, please contact uh, your teacher using uh, Canvas or e your parents' email. Otherwise, we will talk again tomorrow. Thank you.